Welcome to the Fireside Chat, the official podcast of Firepoint Energy. Here are your hosts, Bill Smith and Ian Douglas. Hi, this is Firepoint Energy Chief Communications Officer Ian Douglas, joined once again by Firepoint Energy CEO Bill Smith, and we are going to talk about waste to energy processes today. When people talk about waste to energy, they could be talking about any number of things. So, Bill, can you please provide a simple definition of what we're referring to at Firepoint Energy when we speak about waste to energy processes? Back in 2017, the world came together and I met a guy named Christian Juvon who had built a plasma gas fire specifically to convert garbage into energy. They can convert 25 tons of garbage a day into 500 kilowatts of continuous power. Um, long story short, we basically re-engineered the gasifier to where we can now do 50 tons a day and we can output enough syngas to run a three megawatt turbine. So we're less buck, more bang is the way you're looking at it. And, um, We've always been looking at energy streams that nobody wanted. So in other words, when the oil industry wants to go find oil, they have to do explorations. They have to do a lot of research and drillings to try and find an oil container underground. We go out and drive around and we see a sign that says landfill and it's sticking out of the ground. So those are easy to find. There are landfills all across the nation. And then when I came to Pennsylvania in March of last year to just see what a coal pile looked like, um, I found that there are 9,700 of these piles in the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, so there's no shortage of the energy supply. Uh, it just so happens that the technology we had developed back in 2017 through 2021 is able to take care of these waste streams. So in our case, waste stream is a landfill, uh, tires, abandoned, you know, deforced uh, deforestation, you know, uh, cut down trees. Uh, and of course, bony piles or waste coal piles, cum piles, they call them uh, red dog, they call them all kinds of things. And there's no shortage of those from Pennsylvania all the way down into Texas. So waste, whether it's waste coal, garbage, whatever, energy can be fuels or electricity. That's how we view waste energy. So working from that definition, it would make sense on the surface that any time you could transform a waste stream into a fuel source or another energy source, you should choose to do so. What are the obstacles that prevent the world from embracing waste energy solutions wholeheartedly? The technology we're looking at started in 1920s Germany. From the 1920s to the 1940s, Germany produced 97% of all their fuels, gasoline, jet fuel, diesel fuel, from lignite coal. Uh, through what's called a fisher trope system. They would gasify the coal, produce the syngas. Syngas became jet fuel, gasoline, diesel fuel. Uh, that technology came to the United States in the 1940s after the war ended. It came to the University of Pittsburgh and Texas A&M. They reverse engineered all the technologies and offered it to the oil industry. And the oil industry went like, nah, as long as crude oil is 15 bucks a barrel or less, we'll stick with crude oil. And plus that was an ingrained industry. You know, refineries have already been built across the nation by them. So syngas or synthetic fuels just didn't catch on at the time. Yet every major oil company today, I believe, has a synthetic fuel division or a synthetic energy division. Uh, they're producing synthetic motor oils. That's done through pretty much the same process. Uh, BP, I believe it was, ran a commercial years ago about our clean new fuels, uh, our synthetic fuels. But again, it still didn't catch on because petroleum is so ingrained. So the other issue became this is the gasifier. Um, the, the way to convert that waste stream into syngas uh, has been all over the board for decades. And we started looking at this back in 2005 when Hurricane Katrina uh, came along. And we knew we could grind up the houses and trees, turn them into syngas and produce fuel or energy and get them back on the grid. So that's what drove us in the beginning. And the issue we found is we couldn't find a portable system. Nobody on the planet that I sent people to go look at had a portable system that we could truck to a site and start working. Uh, and again, it wasn't until 2017 when I ran into Dr. Christian Juvon and, you know, 
looked at his gasifier and we did an acquisition and we did re-engineering and we now have a robust system we had designed and it's built through a, another party that we deal with. And we can now effectively produce a clean syngas because of the design of the uh, Juvon uh, gasification system that I haven't seen with anybody else on the planet. And we looked at a lot of systems. So technology is caught up to where we are today. Uh, gas to liquids plants are more energy efficient. They're uh, better at converting uh, syngas into fuels. In fact, um, the system we're looking at for this site and other sites uh, will convert 80% of the syngas right into a drop-in ready jet fuel. In the last 20%, we can thermally uptick back into jet fuel and produce 100% jet fuel. That wasn't really available so many years ago either. So we're just at a place in time where technology is caught up with need and demand. And now it's uh, Firepoint Energy's desire to put these technologies together in this space and time to produce power energy from waste sources uh, eventually around the world. So now as waste energy strategies are unveiled around the world, it's helpful to have realistic expectations of the systems that are being put in place. How much energy does it take to power an average city on a daily basis? And how much waste would it take from a city landfill to meet the daily energy demands of those cities? So I've been out of the garbage cycle of things for quite a while, but I'll try and do some from memory. There were like 10,000 active landfills in the United States. Uh, one of the things we looked at some time ago was they talking about a hydrogen highway is there enough landfills across the country that we could take the garbage, convert it into send gas, pull the hydrogen out, and we could build hydrogen refueling stations across the nation? Uh, landfills also have morphed over the years. There used to be a little town dump or somebody had a little ravine behind their house they would throw garbage and trash into. And then in the 1990s, mid-1990s, uh, they began to formalize the landfill industry. Now there are liners, uh, methane collection, there's uh, leachate collection systems, but there's still one adage that the EPA said it's not if a landfill will ever leak, it's when. So there are enough landfills. Uh, some of these landfills now take in millions and millions of tons a year. And again, when we look at a waste stream, uh, plastic is carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. If we look at wood, it's carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. If we look at uh, coal, it's carbon, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, different variations of those three primary atoms. But in a nutshell, uh, everything that we pretty much touch today becomes some kind of waste stream. This, this calculator, this desk can be turned into fuel. The counters behind me can be converted. This wood flooring can be converted into fuel. So if we stop looking at waste as a bad thing and start looking at it as a good thing, I believe that the landfills could eventually power cities and, and communities. Uh, in fact, I wrote a white paper years ago where we believe we could take the garbage collection of a local community and build a um, power center outside of that area and produce fuels and electricity to power those homes to get them off the grid. So the world has started shifting from a collective grid nationally to microgrids. And I believe that the power needs for these microgrids can come from the waste produced by communities, uh, whether it's a large apartment complex area to a city like Houston or New York. Uh, New York trucks all their garbage from New York City down to a place I used to live in called Gloucester, Virginia. So those trucks are going up and down the highway every single day hauling garbage down there. Why not build the power plants there to turn that garbage into electricity for the grid and start powering portions of a, and eventually possibly even an entire city. So it is possible. Uh, we just have to do a lot of rethinking. And the other thing is it takes a lot of capex, a lot of money to pull these together. So as we look to waste streams for energy, it's helpful to be aware of the fact that not all waste streams have energy potential. So you can't simply take everything and transform it into synthetic gas. What waste streams either have no energy potential or can't be easily converted into fuel? In a nutshell, there's no energy in metal. Um, in fact, that's one of the quandaries of, of gasification. A lot of these companies want to throw so much thermal energy into these gas cars that they start melting the metal and uh, glass and stuff and creating obsidian night and molten metals, which is a waste of energy. 
uh, there's no energy return to the system by melting metal or glass. So adaptive arc had used a term called cool plasma. In other words, create enough thermal energy to disassociate the molecules of plastic, paper, tires, trees, coal, waste coal, uh, your desk, diapers, whatever. And then when you're done with that, move on and, and take the rest out as an ash. And the ash that they tested out of a uh, site in uh, Hannibal, Missouri, where they were processing five classes of hazmat, the ash coming out was sterile. It was clean. So that's another great thing to this process. And actually even the way to use these gas fires is to extract the value added energy and leave the rest behind. So if there are rocks in there, there's no energy in rocks or metal or, you know, things, tile, things like that. So don't do that. Just pull out the value added ener uh, energy from, again, the diapers, wood, whatever. Anything that's pretty much a carbon based material. Are there any concerns that we should have about hazardous waste when it comes to waste to energy processes? So, Adaptive Arc had built a gasifier. They ran it in Hannibal, Missouri, at a place called Continental Cement. And they were running classes one, two, three, four, and five of hazmat through it, uh, converting the, some of the material into send gas, which went into the cement kiln. And as I said earlier, the ash that came out was sterile, it was clean. So there is no issue if, if a battery went through, if a uh, uh, bottle of a uh, can of insecticides or paint went through, all of that gets volatilized, volatilized into send gas, the metals go out and they're clean. So no, we don't care what goes through it. I mean, this thing could even push sewage through it uh, once you dry it. But, you know, a lot of things can be processed through a gas fire that can't be processed any other way. So, Bill, in your mind, what happens if we don't embrace waste to energy processes on a societal level? Oh, well, see, that's a no brainer. Um, I've said this several times. When I was born, there was like three billion people on the planet. That was in 1960. When I met with Barack Obama and McLean, uh, McCain about waste to energy systems, alternative energies, there was something like six billion people on the planet. And today in 2025, there are eight billion people on the planet who what? They want a car, they want a life, they want electricity, they want clothing, they want tennis shoes. They want all the same things we around the world want and need, which means the energy to produce those materials or commodities has to go up because they have to build new factories and things. The other side of the coin is if everybody starts wanting electricity, where is it going to come from? We're not building, really, you're not building more new power plants or building solar plants, but they don't work at night. Uh, they're not building any waste energy plants that I know of, except in Norway, where they're actually combusting garbage and producing electricity there. I believe that the most efficient process is gasification of waste. Uh, as Trump keeps talking about clean coal, clean coal, clean coal, he's actually talking about coal that's been converted to a sin gas to be converted into another commodity. So it's going to take a rethinking and a repurposing of, uh, what we're doing and how we're doing things so that we're cleaning up the environment at the same time because those 8 billion people have throwaway lunch bags, they have paper, they're throwing away diapers and so on. So that waste industry is just going to keep exploding literally because just more and more trash going in the, in the landfills. If you look at these sites, you ought to go look at some of these videos in India where landfills are so tall, they're, they're falling over and crushing villages. So it's something we need to deal with and piling it up and burying it is not the answer. It's gonna be turning it into useful forms of energy that's gonna be the creative solution that the world needs. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Fireside Chat. To offer feedback on this episode or to look for more information about Firepoint Energy, please visit our website at firepoint.energy.